Okay, everybody, let's start into this example. So, a river is discharging into the ocean at a rate of 170,000 meters cubed per second. We determine the amount of power that can be generated if the river water mixes with the ocean water reversibly. We're going to take the salinity of the ocean to be about 2.5% on a mass basis, and assume both the river and the ocean are 15 degrees Celsius. We'll use the table containing the molar mass, gas constant, critical point properties to help ourselves out. So if we're going to do this problem, we're going to have to make some assumptions. And I'm sorry my voice is so gravelly, but I'm making videos for you while I'm sick. First off, we're always making assumptions, but we're really going to need it for this one. The first one is simply that seawater is an ideal and therefore very dilute solution of water and table salt. So we're going to ignore all the other stuff that's in the water, fish, whales, um, random other chemicals. So for that, we got, had got the specific um, ideal gas constant for water. Now we're going to grab some info from the tables. We need the molecular weight of water, which is 18 kilograms per kilomole, and the molecular weight of table salt. I could have just gone to my um, periodic table to calculate this, but I looked it up in the table in the book. Now using those, we're going to find the molecular weight of the mixture. Why? Because we're going to need to calculate some um, mole fractions, and this is going to help us do it. So the molecular weight of the mixture is just a weighted average. I simply take 1 and I divide it by the sum, so note that's a sum right there, of my mass fraction over the molecular weight of the individual component. So I do that first for table salt and then for water, and I get 18.32 kilograms per kilomole. Go ahead and check yourself. It's mostly water. It should be fairly close to that, and it is. Nice. Now we're going to calculate our mole fractions. I honestly only need this for water, so make it easier on yourself. I only do it for water. As I know, I got rid of writing out water and salt because it's going to take me too much space. So the mole fraction of water is simply equal to my mass fraction of water times the fraction I have right here um, of the molecular mass over the molecular weight of water. Since the molecular weight of my mixture is very close to the molecular weight of water, this is very, very close to 1. Finally, I'm going to calculate the max work. How I do this? Well, one thing to remember is my flow work from a long time ago is going to be equal to P times V, right? So this is very much connected to that. So with that, what I'm doing right here is I'm simply saying, okay, I don't have a pressure or volume for this water, but I do have a temperature. I have an ideal gas constant. I know what fraction is actually liquid water. And so with that, I can then calculate and say, okay, what's my work max out per kilogram here? Per kilogram. It's going to be 1.046 kilojoules per kilogram. If I want to find an absolute power out, well, it's going to be equal to the density of the water, which is just 1,000, times the volumetric flow rate which is given in the problem statement, times the max works out, which is 1.046 kilojoules per kilogram, which comes out to be 177,820,000 kilowatts. It's a lot. It's why we use um, hydrostatic generators. Hydropower is powerful. It can do a lot for us. Just be very careful, because when I remove water power from a from a river, it does slow the river down. And there have been places where they've put way too many dams along a river and have completely killed a river. So that being said, we're at the end here. Thank you all for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.